Yo, what up? It's time for a summary of Attack on Titan. Written by Hajime Isayama starting back in 2009, the anime just finished in late 2023. This is Attack on Titan, or Shingeki no Kyojin depending on who you ask. Okay. Before we begin, here are some things that you just have to know and accept about the world. First of all, there are Titans, which are these giant humanoid monsters that look like when you get a portrait drawn of you at an amusement park. They stumble around and try to eat people. Every Titan is descended from the original Titan, Ymir. If you are one of her descendants, then you can get turned into a Titan. But once you are a Titan, that's it. You are stuck as a Titan. Unless you're one of nine special Titans that can shift back and forth between their human and Titan forms. If a regular Titan eats a person with special Titan powers, then they inherit those powers and the memories of that person. So then the new Titan gains the ability to turn back into their human form, which is why all the regular Titans have the instinctual drive to go around and eat other humans because they're looking for one that has special powers. So all nine of the Titan shifters have unique abilities, and two of them have weird powers. First up is the Founding Titan, that can control other Titans and can alter the bodies and minds of anyone that's descended from Ymir. But the Founding Titan can only use its powers if it's held by somebody from the royal family. And all nine of the special Titans can somewhat see the memories of the previous wielders, but the Attack Titan can see the memories of future wielders. The other seven are just strong guys. There's the Armored, Colossal, Female, Beast, Jaw, Cart, and Warhammer Titans. Also, after someone gains special Titan powers, they'll die 13 years later because that's how long the first Titan lived after they got their powers. And last but not least, all of Ymir's descendants are connected to each other through some metaphysical world called the Paths, where time doesn't exist. And that'll do it for the weird magic of the universe, so here's the story. Right, so 2,000 years before the first episode, a slave girl for the Eldians named Ymir frees some pigs, or is at least just blamed for it. Her owners release her into the wild and they hunt her for sport. While running away, she falls into a tree and encounters the source of all living matter, and turns into the first titan. The king of Eldia, Fritz, is like, hey, that's pretty dope, I could use that. So he has three daughters with her and conquers the nearby nation of Marley with her powers. So after doing a whole bunch of conquering, Fritz is living on top of the world. And one day a Marleyan soldier tries to assassinate Fritz, but Ymir blocks it. And normally Ymir could just heal her injuries with her titan powers, but she just decides to die instead. And King Fritz is like, well, I don't really want to lose those titan powers. Maybe there's a way that we can keep that going. Kids, eat your mom. And they do. And it works. Ymir's consciousness stays alive in the paths where she creates the bodies of future titans and continues to carry out the commands of the royal family. So now Ymir's daughters have the titan powers and as more time goes on more and more descendants are born and eventually the titan powers are split into the nine special ones. The Fritz family keeps the founding titan power and the other ones just go to some noble families. Eventually Eldia has conquered pretty much everything around them so the nobles start having a bunch of civil wars. Around this time a special clan called the Akermans comes around and functions as the king's bodyguard. They can't become titans but are really strong due to some Eldian experiments with the titan powers. Centuries pass and eventually the 145th king, Karl Fritz, inherits the founding titan. And he's kind of like, you know this whole genocide and conquering thing? That's pretty bad. I think we're the bad guys and we need to be punished. <laughs> so Karl Fritz conspires with one of the noble families, the Tibers, who have the Warhammer Titan, to plot Eldia's downfall. The Tiber family helps start a Merlean uprising, and then Marley becomes the dominant power of the mainland, controlling seven of the nine titans. Karl Fritz gathers pretty much every Eldian and moves them to Parody Island. Then he uses the power of the Founding Titan to make a bunch of giant titans to make three big walls that protect and trap the remains of the Eldian Empire. He erases the memories of all the Eldians of the island and makes it so they think that titans wiped out the rest of humanity. A few allies of Eldia also came with the Parody Island, but they're immune to the brainwashing, so they're offered positions as nobles if they agree to keep their mouths shut about the true history of the world. But the Hizuru clan and the Akermans refuse, so they get hunted down to near extinction. Then, in order to make sure the next person with the Founding Titan powers doesn't just undo everything, Karl Fritz uses the Founding Titan powers to make sure that his will is passed along to his descendants as well. Within the walls, the Fritz family changes their name to the Rice family and puts a different family up on the throne to be in charge so that they can stay hiding in secret. 
Back in Marley, the Eldians that were left behind become low-class citizens, and Marley goes around telling everybody that the Titan power comes from the devil, and that all the Eldians are bad. So over the next few decades, Marley researches the Titan powers and discovers how to turn Eldians into Titans and about the existence of the paths. A random cult forms and some little homeless girl is named Ymir and worshipped. The cults eventually discovered and all the members are brought to Parody Island and turned into Pythons. Eventually an Eldian named Grisha Jaeger and his sister are born. They leave the internment zone one day and go to look at a blimp, but they're caught by some officers who take his sister away to feed her to some dogs, which makes Grisha hate Marley and vow revenge. He grows up and joins a rebel group and marries Dina Fritz, the last royal Eldian and Marley, and they have a kid named Zeke. Over on the island, one of the last Akermans, Kenny, learns about the persecution of the Akermans and tries to kill the current founding Titan Yuri, but instead they become friends and he joins the military police. He discovers that his little sister had a kid and raises him until he can fend for himself. That kid is Levi and he'll go on to join the Survey Corps and eventually become humanity's strongest soldier. The Marleyan government trains specially selected Eldian children to inherit the power of the Nine Titans because they want to go to Parody Island to take its resources, and the founding Titan. To entice Eldian children to join the group, they promise that them and their families will be treated a whole lot better if they become warriors. Grisha's group learns about this from a spy, and Grisha gets Zeke to join the warrior program, but instead of being a doubled agent, Zeke turns all the rebels in. Despite turning his parents in, Zeke still sympathized with their goal of freeing all the Eldians from Marley oppression, so he'll keep growing up and thanks to his mentor, eventually come up with a master plan to use the founding titan to make all Eldians sterile so that they'll naturally die off within a hundred years or so instead of being wiped out in a genocide, which is his own twisted little way of freeing the Eldians. Grisha and the rest of the rebels are brought to Parody Island to be turned into titans, but before Grisha gets turned, the spy reveals himself and kills all of the nearby soldiers. The spy, Kruger, is the current attack titan and all almost at the end of his lifespan. Kruger turns Grisha into a titan and lets himself get eaten, making Grisha the next attack titan. Grisha makes his way to the walls and is eventually discovered by Keith Shadis. Grisha lives inside the wall for some years and eventually marries a woman named Carla and has a child named Aaron, the main character of the story. He'll grow up with his buddies Mikasa and Armin. One day, Mikasa gets abducted by traffickers and Aaron goes to save her, killing two of the traffickers. During this event, Mikasa awakens her Akerman powers and kills the final one. While growing up, Armin is a real smart cookie, but he's pretty weak, so Aaron and Mikasa get into fights all the time to stop people from picking on him. Let's talk about the kids that Marley is training to be warriors. Pretty much all of them have the same motivation to get a better life for them and their families. And one of them, Reiner, sucks. He's not particularly skilled at anything, but he's fiercely loyal to Marley. Initially, Reiner wasn't going to inherit the powers of one of the Titans due to being so bad, but one of the other warrior candidates, Marcel, lies to the higher-ups about his brother Porco's performance, so Reiner overtakes him in the rankings. So now, Zeke, Bertolt, Reiner, Annie, Marcel, and Peek have all inherited Titan powers. Marley sends Bertolt, Reiner, Annie, and Marcel to the island to retrieve the founding Titan, and while they're just chilling, Marcel gets eaten by a random Titan that turns out to be that cult girl from before Ymir. She regains her humanity and becomes the new Jaw Titan. Even though Bertolt and Annie want to abandon the mission at this point, Reiner convinces them to continue onward. And that brings us to the first episode. So one day Aaron's just living in the outer wall district Giganchina. Bertolt transforms into the Colossal Titan and kicks open a hole in the outer wall, letting the Titans roaming around on the island in. They start eating people and Aaron's mom gets eaten, which makes Aaron real mad and now he wants to kill all the Titans. Reiner transforms into the Armored Titan and breaks through the inner gate, which lets Titans pour into the whole first area of the walls, causing the Eldians to retreat inward. While that was going on, Grisha went and found the Rice family, and eats the current founding Titan and then wipes out the rest of the Rice family, except for this guy, Rod, who runs away and goes to find his illegitimate daughter Historia. Grisha comes back and finds Eren. He brings him into a forest and tells him that he needs to return to their basement to learn some sick secrets. He injects Aaron with Titan Serum and lets himself get eaten, which gives Aaron the attack and founding Titan powers. But Aaron won't remember this event for quite a while. So Aaron, now confused, mad, and parentless, joins the military with Mikasa and Armin. Reiner, Bertolt, and Annie also join the military to be all covert and spy-like. Also, Historia joined the military too, and she's gonna have the secret identity Krista. And then Ymir decided to join the army as well, and she's gonna be buds with Historia. So everybody trains and eventually they graduate after three years. And here's a quick military breakdown. They have three branches, the garrison which protects the walls, the survey corps which goes exploring outside the walls, 
and the military police that does policing things inside the walls. The top 10 graduates of their class are Mikasa, Reiner, Bertolt, Annie, Aaron, Jean, Marco, Connie, Sasha, and Krista. At the outer gate of Trost, Bertolt turns into the colossal Titan again and breaks open the gate, so Titans pour in and the new graduates get to work fighting the Titans. During the battle, one of the top 10, Marco, overhears the warriors gossiping about their mission, so they get rid of him by letting a Titan eat him. Aaron also gets eaten by a Titan during the raid, but instead of dying, this awakens his Titan powers and he turns into the attack Titan for the first time. And despite beating up a whole bunch of Titans, the military officers are all afraid of them, so they're about to kill him, but Commander Pixis shows up and is like, nah. Let's use them. So Titan Aaron uses a big rock to seal a hole in the wall and to prevent more Titans from coming in and the rest of the group gets rid of the remaining Titans. Then Aaron falls asleep and when he wakes up, they put him on trial, thinking he's some kind of enemy. But Levi beats him up in court to prove that he can be controlled and Erwin, the commander of the survey corps, convinces the judge to let him watch over him and use him. Aaron trains his abilities with Hanji, one of the survey corps members that's obsessed with Titans. The rest of the top 10 cadets and Armin and Ymir from Aaron's grade join the survey corps, except Annie who goes on to join the military police. Eventually, the Survey Corps goes on its first mission, and Annie, wanting to capture Aaron, attacks the Corps in her Titan form. She kills a bunch of scouts, including most of Levi's squad. She's able to capture Aaron, but Levi and Mikasa rescue him. After some sleuthing from Armin, the Survey Corps suspects that Annie is the female Titan, and with the concern that there are more of her allies within Aaron's graduating class, every cadet from that class gets taken away on a mission with the Survey Corps, except for Aaron, Mikasa, Armin, and Jean. In the Stoas district, they try to quietly capture her, but she transforms and she and Aaron do some titan fighting, and at some point a hole breaks in the wall revealing a titan's face. In the end, she can't escape and encases herself in a crystal. So, after learning that there's titans inside of the wall, Hanji goes to interrogate Minister Nick, the leader of a cult that worships the walls, but he refuses to say anything helpful. Meanwhile, Zeke, who inherited the Beast Titan, invades the island and uses his spinal fluid to turn the residents of Connie's village into titans under his control, including Connie's mom, who gets stuck on their house. Seeing titans inside the wall makes everyone think that there's a new hole in the wall somewhere and they frantically go to look for it. Levi shows Minister Nick a bunch of refugees from the supposed wall breach, which makes him have a small change of heart, and he reveals that he's not allowed to say much about the walls, but a member of the royal family could and alludes to the existence of Historia. Unable to find the hole in the wall, the scouts take refuge in a nearby castle, which is eventually attacked by the titans that Zeke are controlling. The titans kill everybody except for the unarmed cadets, and in order to save Historia and the rest of the scouts, Emir transforms of the Jaw Titan and protects everyone. The rest of the main cast eventually catches up and Historia reveals that she's a descendant of the Rice family. Reiner and Bertolt reveal that they have Titan powers and capture Aaron and Ymir, but the rest of the scouts go after them and rescue them. During the rescue, the same Titan that killed Aaron's mom shows up and he punches it, which lets him use some of the founding Titan's power because secretly that Titan was Dina Fritz. And if a regular person with the Founding Titan power touches a royal family Titan, then they can use the Founding Titan powers. So a bunch of nearby Titans attack that Titan, Reiner and Bertolt. Aaron's like, huh. Well, that was weird. Reiner and Bertolt retreat to Shiganshina district with Ymir, who's agreeable to go back to Marley with them because she feels bad that she killed their friend Marcel. After learning that the wall is made up of hardened Titans, Aaron tries to learn the ability but struggles. Hoping to get some more information from Minister Nick, Hanji goes to talk to him again, but he's been assassinated by the military police. With the help of Demo Reeves, the head of a merchant company, the Survey Corps captures the officer that killed Minister Nick and gets him to spill the beans that the Rice family are the true leaders of the walls and not their puppet king. The Survey Corps is ambushed by a squadron of the military police that includes Kenny, the guy who raised Levi. They capture Aaron and Historia and book it, and then Kenny kills Demo. Pixis and Erwin start planning a coup, and the government slash military police orders the arrest of the Survey Corps members, claiming that they were the ones that killed Demo. Marlo and Hitch, two other military police members looking for the scouts on the run, end up joining their cause and lead them to a military police outpost where they capture an officer to try to find Aaron and Historia's location. Meanwhile, Hanji and Demo's son Flegel are able to trick some military police into revealing that they were the culprits behind Demo's murder in public, and the newspaper runs a story, clearing the scouts' names. The royal government orders Aaron to be sentenced to death, but at the same time, another military member reports that the wall has been breached, and the royal government orders that the military police close the gate so no refugees can enter. But then the head of the military comes in and is like, Psych! We got you! That was just to see how you'd react if that really did happen, and we don't like that decision. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and coup it up now. 
Hanji tags up with Levi's squad and the group heads off to where Aaron and Historia are being held. Aaron wakes up in a cave and Historia touches his back, which lets Aaron see all of Grisha's memories from when Grisha took the Founding Titan and then went and let Aaron eat him, which traumatizes the heck out of him. Rod wants Historia to take the Founding Titan power from Aaron, but she refuses and frees him instead. The scouts show up and they fight with Kenny's squad. Rod drinks some Titan Serum and turns into a giant Titan and brings down the cavern that they're in and starts crawling towards the closest city. Before the cave collapses, Aaron ingests some Armor Serum which gives him the ability to harden and protects the scouts from the cave -in. And after a big team effort from the group, they defeat the Titan before it does any real damage and Historia deals the final blow. And then being the last true royal Eldian, she's crowned the Queen of the Walls. Kenny dies from the wounds that he got when Rod transformed and gives Levi a vial of Titan Serum. Using technology from Kenny's squad, the Survey Corps develops some new technology to help them fight Titans. The scouts go on a mission to Shiganshina to plug the hole in the wall using Eren's new ability to harden. While they're there, Zeke's Beast Titan shows up with a bunch of other Titans and starts throwing big old rocks at everybody. Eren and Reiner fight, and Reiner gets wrecked by their new technology. Berthold is thrown in and transforms, causing a big explosion. Erwin leads the charge against the Beast Titan and pretty much everybody involved dies, except for this guy, Flock. Levi makes it to Zeke and cuts him out of the Titan, but before he can deal the finishing blow, he's saved by Peak, the Cart Titan. Over in the town, the scouts are having a hard time getting close to Berthold due to the heat that he's putting off, so Armin sacrifices himself in a diversionary attack to take down Berthold, and it works. In order to save Armin, Levi is about to use the Titan Serum on him to feed him Berthold, but then Flock shows up carrying an almost dead Erwin. After Mikasa and Eren plead for Armin's life, Levi tells him that he's going to use the Serum on Erwin, but at the last minute he changes his mind and transforms Armin into a Titan instead. He eats Berthold and becomes a new Colossal Titan, saving his life. The scouts make it to Grisha's basement and learns about the existence of Marley. The survivors of the attack are all honored in a ceremony. During the ceremony, Historia touches Eren and he sees memories of his future self including all of his future terrible actions. Over in Marley, the nearby country is hearing that they lost two titans decide to declare war on them. Instead of continuing their mission on parody, Reiner, Peak, and Zeke all head back to Marley for defense. Also, Amir, already back in Marley, is fed to Porco Galliard, who inherits the Jaw Titan. Over the next two years, Marley defends itself against the nearby countries. At some point, Zeke meets up with Kiyomi of, of the Azumabito clan and he's like, hey, secretly, I'm on Eldia's side, and they discuss plans to rebuild the Eldian Empire. Marley sends several ships to Parody Island, but each time Eren and Armin intercept them. Some of the ship's crew were an anti-Marleyan group made up of people who have had their homelands ravaged by Marley, so they defect and ally with the people of the walls, teaching them about the technology of the mainland and letting them in on the Zeke's secret plan to save the Eldian people. This group is named the Vol volunteers, and one of their members, Yelena, is crazy loyal to Zeke. And they're gonna work behind the scenes to help Zeke with his secret euthanasia plan while all the other volunteers think that Zeke is just rebelling against Marley. One of the regular Marleyan soldiers from the ship, Niccolo, starts working as a chef and develops feelings for Sasha since she loves his food. He's given orders from Yelena to serve as much wine as possible to the military officers. Unbeknownst to him, the wine contains Zeke's spinal fluid. The Azumabito clan makes contact with Parody and they become allies as well. They tell the residents of Parody Island that Zeke's plan is to dissuade the rest of the world from attacking the island by showing them that the titans that make up the walls could literally trample the rest of the world, aka the rumbling. But everyone's still mad suspicious of Zeke, so they're not eager to make allies of him. Also, we learn that Mikasa is descended from the Azumabito clan. One of the conditions to deter external invasion is to always have a titan with royal blood available so that they can use the founding titan's powers, meaning they want Historia to have as many babies as possible, and to have her inherit the beast titan. Eren, not wanting any more of his friends to become titans and ultimately die in 13 years, refuses the plan. Secretly, Yelena meets with Eren and discusses Zeke's euthanasia plan, and Eren pretends to go along with it. More secretly, Aaron tells Flock about his plan to use the rumbling for realsies and just crush the rest of the world, and to gather allies for their cause. Aaron meets with Historia and tells her that the military is planning to feed Zeke to her, which she's cool with. He tells her his plan to destroy the world, which she is not cool with. To delay being fed Zeke, she goes and gets pregnant. The main cast goes to Marley on a recon mission, and while they're away, Aaron abandons the scouts and enlists as an Eldian soldier in the Marleyan military. Also, Reiner got traumatized while living on the island because the residents of the island weren't actually all evil like he was raised to believe. So now he regrets breaking open the walls. Also during these two years, Armin and Hitch visit Annie in her crystallized state and give her updates on the outside world. And let's just lay out everybody's plans and what they want to accomplish. Marley, reclaim the founding titan and the others and take over the world. Zeke, euthanize all the Eldians so that they'll die out naturally over a hundred years instead of getting wiped out in a genocide. Eren, use the rumbling to wipe out everybody besides the residents of Parody. The military of Parody. 
always have a Royal Titan available so that the Founding Titan's powers can be used to flex the rumbling on the world if they're ever attacked. So anyway, the war against Marley is finally over. The next generation of warrior candidates to inherit the Titans has also been training. Here's Falco and Gabi. Gabi, Reiner's cousin, is a little baller and good at everything she does, so she's next in line to inherit the Armored Titan. Falco is less good, but he likes Gabi, so he wants to inherit the Armored Titan so that she can live a long life. Falco's older brother Colt is the next candidate for Zeke's Beast Titan, and their commander's named Magoth. Aaron, now in Marley as a wounded soldier in a hospital, befriends Falco, and tricks him into sending letters to the scouts. At the Night of a Festival for World Ambassadors, Willie Tiber reveals the truth of the Great Titan War of the Past and labels Aaron Yeager as the greatest threat to world peace due to having the Founding Titan. During his speech, Aaron, below the stage, transforms into the Attack Titan and kills Tiber before going on a rampage. Lara Tiber transforms into the Warhammer Titan and shows up to fight Aaron, and then the rest of the scouts show up to fight. Mikasa shows up to help bring her down. Aaron defeats Porco as the Jaw Titan and eats Lara, obtaining the Warhammer Titan, and Zeke lets himself get kidnapped by Levi. The scouts retreat with Aaron and Zeke, but Gabi and Falco sneak onto a getaway ship and Gabi shoots Sasha dead. Aaron is imprisoned due to his insubordination, and in order to prevent Zeke from meeting up with them, he's guarded by Levi, and the anti marlian volunteers are put under house arrest. Gabi and Falco escape custody and meet up with Sasha's family, who let them stay with them and are just super nice to them, which confuses Gabi because she was raised to think that all the Eldians on the island were evil. Flock has formed a group of people loyal to Aaron called the Jaegerists, and they plant a bomb that kills the head of the military because they were planning to feed Aaron to somebody else. Aaron escapes his cell and goes to meet up with the Jaegerist. Meanwhile, the Blouse family, with Gabi and Falco, are treated to dinner by Nicolo, the chef that had the hots for Sasha. Recognizing him as a Marleyan soldier, Gabi reveals herself to him and tells him that she was the one that killed Sasha, prompting him to hit her with a wine bottle. But Falco gets hit in the head instead, and some of the wine gets into his mouth. The Survey Corps breaks up the fight, and Nicolo reveals that he's suspicious that Zeke's spinal fluid was in the wine. The Jaegerists enter the restaurant and take the Survey Corps members captive, demanding that Hanji take them to Zeke. Aaron meets with Mikasa and Armin, and he's super mean to them because he wants them to feel motivated to stop his plans later. Zeke tries to escape Levi by turning everybody nearby into Titans, but Levi takes them all out and captures them again. While en route back to the wall, Zeke detonates a Thunder Spear, leaving both him and Levi critically wounded. Before he dies, a pure Titan shows up and stuffs him into its stomach. Zeke wakes up in the past and finds Ymir rebuilding his body. Hanji leads the Jaegeris to Zeke and they see him emerging from the Titan's belly. While everyone's distracted, Hanji takes Levi and jumps into a nearby river. Aaron interrogates Gabi, but secretly Pika's infiltrated the island and ambushes Aaron and tries to convince him that she's joined his side. She leads him to a rooftop before Porco turns into the Jaw Titan and does a sneak attack on him before the rest of Marley launches an attack. Reiner parachutes in and Aaron fights him and Porco. One of the volunteers, Onyakopan, releases the Survey Corps members hoping that they'll fight against Marley. Zeke shows up and throws rock at Marley, but Peek and Magoth take him down. Colt meets up with Falco and learns that he ingested some of Zeke's spinal wine, so he tries to get him to delay his attack, but Zeke just apologizes and turns the parody military officers into Titans, which kills Colt in the process. The new Titans start rampaging around town. Zeke orders Falco to eat Reiner, but a mortally wounded Porco lets himself be eaten instead, giving Falco the Jaw Titan powers. Aaron rushes towards Zeke, but Gabi snipes his head off. Zeke catches it and both he and Aaron are transported into the paths. Aaron reveals to Zeke that he won't go along with his euthanasia plan, but Ymir won't let him use the Founding Titans as he expected. Thinking that he was brainwashed by their father, Zeke takes Aaron on a trip through his father's memories and eventually comes to the night that he stole the Founding Titan from the Rice family. Initially reluctant to wipe out the Rice family, Aaron aggressively encourages Grisha to do it. Realizing that Aaron was never controlled by anybody, Zeke orders Ymir to sterilize all the Eldians. Aaron tells her that she doesn't need to serve anybody anymore, and that if she lets him use her powers, then he'll end the world. Back in the real world, that weird source of all life critter emerges from Aaron's body and connects to his head, turning him into a massive, gigantic titan. The walls crumble, revealing a bunch of large titans. One of them eats Zeke, and they all begin marching towards the outer countries. Using the pads, Aaron telepathically speaks to all of the Eldians and lets them know that the rumbling will destroy everything outside of parody. The Eldians back in Marley start panicking, they overpower nearby guards and attempt to escape. In all the chaos, Connie slips away with Falco with the intent to feed him to his mom so that she can become a human again. Meanwhile, when the walls became unhardened, Annie's crystal also became unhardened and Hitch helps her escape. The Jaegerists restrain the anti marlian volunteers, including Yelena and Onyankopan. Hanji and Levi meet up with Peek and Magoth, and the group agrees to try to stop Aaron. Meanwhile, Armin and Gabi are able to stop Falco from being eaten, and Armin tries to let himself be eaten by Connie's mom, but Connie saves him instead. The group happens to come across Annie, who decides to tag along with them. Also, Reiner joins the group as well. 
Back in Shiganshina, Jean, supposedly siding with Flock and the Agorist in order to have an easy life, is about to execute on Yankapan and Yelena. But he shoots the ground instead, signaling Peak to jump in and rescue them. Knowing that they'll need a boat to get to Marley, Flock and the Jaegerist capture a port along with Kiyomi and her engineers. The group attacks the port and they're able to prevent the Jaegerist from blowing up the flying ship and Mikas is able to rescue Kiyomi and the engineers. The group decides to refuel the flying ship in a different location so they all get on a boat. Keith Shada shows up and he and Magath blow up the other ship in the harbor so that the Jaegerist can't use it to pursue the group. While on the ship, Aaron speaks to his comrades and tells them that his master plan is to wipe out humanity to the point that the population is equal to Parody Island, and that he wants them to stop him so that they'll be seen as heroes. Then he wipes their memories of the message and they'll remember it when they finish him off. By this time, the rumbling has made it to Marley and crushed Annie and the others' hometown, prompting Annie to no longer have the will to stop Aaron. The group makes it to the refueling station and gets to work, but Flock had been holding onto the bottom of the boat and reveals himself, shooting a hole in the fuel tank of the flying ship. Oyankopan and the engineers scramble to repair the ship while the wall titans approach. In order to delay the titans, Hanji sacrifices themselves. The engineers, Yelena, Gabi, Falco, and Annie all escape on the regular ship and the rest of the group flies towards Eren. Along the way, Eren tells them that there will be no discussion and they can only save the world by killing him. Meanwhile, the Eldians and Marley, including the families of Peek, Reiner, and Annie, have made their way to an airship base in time to see the airships launching a final raid on Eren. The attack fails, but the survey corps drops in for their attack. Emir summons previous incarnations of the Nine Titans to attack the group. Armin is captured before he can transform and the rest of the crew is not doing well. But Falco, discovering that he could fly in his Titan form, flies in to save the group along with Gabi and Annie. They arrive in time to save everybody from dying and the group circles back to attack. In the pads, Armin speaks to Zeke about life, and Zeke agrees to let himself be killed by Levi so that Eren can't use the founding Titan powers anymore. Zeke and Armin also convince the previous Titans that they know to lend a hand so that they're able to manifest their Titans on Eren and support the group. The group rescues Armin and Jean is able to blow Eren's head off, and the source of all living matter emerges again. Armin tries to blow it up by turning into the Colossal Titan. The source of all living matter doesn't die and starts releasing a gas that turns all the Eldians into Titans, so the Akermans and the Titan Shifters head back to Eren for a final attack. Attack. Mikasa enters Eren's mouth and is shown an alternate reality where Eren and her were able to run away together and live out their life in peace. Mikasa flashes back to reality and kills Eren. The ghost of Ymir watches Eren, and seeing Mikasa kill the one that she loved, she's able to let go of her own past and twisted love for King Fritz, and fades away from the world along with the power of the Titans. The converted Titans all turn back into normal people, and Mikasa departs the battlefield to bury Eren's head. The Marlians are all on edge from seeing everybody become Titans and are about to light him up, but Armin takes credit for killing Eren and the Marlians chill out. Three years later, the forces back on Parody Island have rallied in case of an attack from the outside world. Armin, Jean, Connie, Peek, Annie, and Reiner all go to serve as ambassadors between the island of Parody and the rest of the world. And Mikasa sits by Eren's grave, waiting for them to visit. And that's the end of the story, minus the epilogue where parody is destroyed and history looks like it's set to repeat itself. Also, if you want to convince me that this dude is Jean and Mikasa and him ended up together, I do read comments. But anyway, thanks for making it to the end of the video, and if you want to be part of the 3% of the people that are subscribed to the channel, feel free to hit that button down below. Bye!